Greetings, my fellow Homo sapiens, and a very warm welcome to you all. Our family has now grown to over 200,000 strong. Absolutely chuffed to bits I am to have you all in the clan. And if you're not part of the clan, then please hit that subscribe button and come on board. So after avoiding it for nearly two years, I finally got infected with the Lurgy. And I won't even give it the pleasure by mentioning its name. Don't say that name. Um, yeah, we don't actually say that name in here. I recovered quicker than a footballer pretending to be injured in the final minutes of a match. However, I haven't been able to shake off the chronic fatigue. So instead of doing a strenuous, crazy restoration, only to find myself asleep at the bench in a pool of drool and parts stuck to the side of my cheek, I thought I would do a video of a day-to-day -day repair and service. Well, that's what I thought. So this is a Vacheron Constantin, which is here for a little spruce up and a service. And guess what? It's a quartz. <coughs> so this brand is considered as being part of the so-called holy trinity of watchmaking. Ooh, that's a bit blasphemous. So it's considered as part of the top three watchmakers in the world, which is an unofficial title. The other two being Patek Philippe and Audemars Piguet. So I can understand the screams and raised eyebrows at the mention of that disgusting word, quartz. It'll be fine, don't worry. If the top three are using quartz, then it can't be that bad. This model is called the Harmony and is losing time. And before even opening it to investigate, I was already struggling with these unharmonious chewed up screws. Look at the state of all these screws. Looks like somebody's had a go at this. There's hardly anything on that one. Now I have a funny feeling that the hands are very close to that dial. These quartz movements, the torque is so small. Any sort of obstruction will stop it from moving. I think even if you stared at the hands in a judgmental way, it will probably stop working. Ew, you're a quartz. Shame on you, you don't belong here. Okay. So this is also a steel and 18 karat gold integrated bracelet. And it looks like it's had a bit of a polish previously because this is supposed to be all brushed. This is just a light refurb and service, nothing too crazy, just to give you guys exposure to another brand that we haven't done. Look at this little section here. Looks like somebody's bent that on the previous intervention. So I've had to loosen these off camera so I don't damage them any further. But they are coming out. So it's just a case of replacing them with some new ones. So the next person who services it doesn't have a similar issue. And I'll just try and finish the rest of these off, off camera because I need to really press down on them. So the screws just keep turning and turning. Nothing seems to be coming out. It's a case of finding these screws somewhere. Oh, I know you. This is what a prestigious Swiss quartz movement looks like. I think this may be a JLC movement. Looks like somebody's had a good old go at this and used the wrong screwdrivers for everything. It's very important to use the right size screwdrivers, otherwise you end up damaging the screws. I'm guilty of doing it myself sometimes. Well, you can see clearly somebody's tried to use a really big screwdriver like this one and then shaved off the whole plastic as well from it. So there's the crown out. Now I reckon if I reset those hands, we should solve our problem, but while we're at it, we'll just strip this whole thing and service it. Looks like somebody's tried to glue this bit in at some point, because it's all over the shop. You can see more signs of adhesive. Look at the way these hands have been set as well. And the other hand is touching the dial, it doesn't look very happy. And then the minute hand looks like it's excited about something because it's pointing upwards. A few gremlins here and there. Let's see what else turns up. Ooh, 
metal metal ooh metal a dial fit screw there there was supposed to be another one there but it's missing by the looks of it so it looks like this little trim or border on the dial sort of spot welded or spot riveted on somebody's tried to reattach it somehow okay so now we see so they've decided to just apply a bit of glue oh deary me i could put this on a small anvil and try and hammer it out but because there are some feet here and usually you should hammer it from where the peaks are rather than this way if it was if i was hammering it this way then i can just put it flat on an anvil but because i need to hammer it this way and the feet are there i was thinking of making a few holes on a piece of wood the feet can go inside the holes and then I can hammer those few peaks as you can see and get it nice and flat so it sits on the dial without any glue so after some further forensics I have come to the hypothesis that this border is supposed to be friction fitted on flat to the dial but the previous cheeky soul thought sod it I'm just gonna glue it down flat this probably caused the border to sit up even higher causing the minute hand to get stuck underneath the border on its way round. Our cheeky friend then decided to bend the minute hand upwards as a solution, which was then probably causing the minute hand to kiss the glass on its way round, contributing to its inability to keep accurate time. There is hardened adhesive on the border, on the dial and around the feet, all adding to the problem. The adhesive around the feet was stopping the feet from going all the way in thus not allowing the border to sit completely flat. There is hardly any margin of error on this setup as the hour wheel and cannon pinion are very short. Companies such as Bacheron Constantin, Jaja Lacoult, Cartier, Piaget and many others are owned by the Richemont Group and getting parts from the Richemont Group for independents like me is usually a case of knowing a guy who knows a guy. You can't say guy, you have to be gender neutral dude. Huh, you just said dude. So I have not been able to find these screws anywhere. So instead I'll just find some screws that are the correct tap and then rework the heads and the lengths. And here you can see I've mocked up a few screws and they all fit because I've selected the correct thread but if you have a look the screw heads are all quite big so all we need to do is file down those screw heads. So you can see here how the original screws are countersunk into the case back and my new screw heads are way too big. So, as you guys can see, I've mangled up my lathe, so I can't actually put the bed on it now. So, I can still use this bit freehand and just file down those screw heads. And that's all we need to do really. I 
and we need to get that down to 1.10. One point one eight, a bit more. One point one eight. Do it slowly so you don't overdo it. There you go, it's about one point ten. And the rest will come off with the sandpaper. I can't even see a caliber number on this watch, but I'm pretty sure this is a, a movement by Jeje Lecoutre. This is a Vacheron caliber 1010, which is in fact a movement produced by Jeje Lecoutre, caliber 602. It's a thin and very simple 7 joule movement produced in the 1980s. Due to its small size, this movement allowed brands to produce very slim and elegant dress watches. So this whole jacket is attached to the coil by the looks of it. So be very careful when you're undoing this screw here. Because one small slip on that coil, then you might as well call it a day and go have a lie down. Okay, so it's an integrated coil. Let's put that somewhere safe. And there's the rest of it. Dismantle the chain. Even for a quartz movement, you can see they finished it with the cut de Genève, the perlaging there as well. Even though none of this detailing will ever be seen, apart from by me, these wheels are so small. Step rotor. We'll remove the hour wheel. Tiny little cannon pin in there. No point even trying to get this out with a tool because it's so small. There you go. It's dropped out anyway. There you go. The status seem to be fixed. So I think I'll leave them alone just for now. And we'll just work on the keyless. So even on this side, I've done a bit of perlage work. Ta -da! So that's it, ladies and gents. That's all the parts you need, really. Any more than that is just a waste. These are parts that are just too small to put directly into my basket. Otherwise, I'll just end up losing it. Put it in a small basket like that. 
and then I can put the rest in the basket and we wash the step rotor separately. Let's get the microphone on. So I'm just going to give it a light buff on the machine just to polish up the stainless steel parts and then I'll finish all this off by hand. Do you reckon? It's a plan. And then once we've removed all the tool marks, we'll uh, give it a straight grain. Just prepping them up and making it nice and flat. Charge it up. Harmony. Get my special mop out. Yeah, that's a hairy mop. Everybody. <laughs> That looks very good. Just use my fine mop to do the gold sections. There's a lot of bump fluff on it. But I want to do these steel sections as well. So I'm going to change them up. This is a medium grit. You can see how coarse it is. And this one, not fine, it's not medium, it's, what's that, TF? Totally fine. <laughs> yeah? Oh. That's a fail. Was that a fail? Yeah. Just gently buffed it up, and now we can straight grain it. And the straight grain has to go which way? Let's go this way, horizontally, yeah? So we want to hold it yeah. like that. Just needs a little wash. Oh no! Game over, man. Game over. Choo -choo, choo -choo. So all I've done is just given it a gentle buff mainly just to get that the stainless steel parts nice and mirrored because they will stay mirrored and as for the gold well we're just going to scratch that up now anyway when we apply the straight grain so I haven't taken off too many of the scratches because that would mean I'd be removing a lot of gold and there's the case back I've kept it mirrored on the on the, on the rim and I've straight grain the center Too fine. That's fine. Four, two. Ooh, that one is a bit too harsh. Then we'll use this one. Are you ready? Ready, mister? Yeah. You are gonna work on a Vacheron Constantin, yeah. the watch of kings and queens. So then, go for it. Gently, back again, gently, so you can see it's coming along slowly, 
so we can see the difference and it also pops really well with the mirrored stainless steel parts so I'll just continue on with that so even here We should have this done in about 10 minutes. Time for the match. Okay, so look at this cannon pinion. That's one millimeter. The setting wheel, sliding pinion. And there's one of the screws. Oh. Okay, let's get this done before the footy kicks off. Step rotor in here. Trouble's here. Hello, mate. You don't feature in this episode, where you been? A legendary. <laughs> legendary. A mongus. He did all of my Pokemon cards. Pokemon? Pokemon. That's like from the 90s, isn't it? Yeah. How come you're into all that stuff? How do you get Pikachu on a bus? How? You Pokemon. <laughs> You Pokemon. Oh, you Pokemon. We'll get the setting lever screw in before we put the circuit in. There's the circuit and coil. The biggest screw goes here. Let's get that setting lever in. Okay, hey, so there you go. There should be a pulse every 20 seconds. And we have a nice strong pulse. Stronger than my pulse. Yep, it's definitely stronger than mine. Now it's time for the footy.
So even after addressing the border issue, we have an issue with the dial itself. When the dial is installed onto the movement, one side is sitting really flush, but the other side is raised, causing the hour wheel and cannon pinion to sink in, which was causing the hour hand to be sitting right on the dial. And I can see the reason for this is one of the dial feet are bent and there is a lot of gunk around the feet. So there you have it friends, just a light refurbishment which ended up teaching us some ways not to do things. Not everyone can wield super glue as we saw on this example. We also got to see another prestigious brand using a quartz movement. This piece screams the 1980s, a decade which many of us on this channel share a huge deal of affection and fondness for. So I was happy to film this one for you guys. It seems like every video I'm banging on about a new milestone on this channel and now we have reached another milestone, 200,000 subscribers. I can't not mention it because I need to acknowledge your help and input for reaching those milestones and I just need to share the love. So thank you guys so much for getting us there. A cold harsh winter is coming for a lot of us and Omnicron and Megatron are on the loose. So please look after yourselves and look after each other. Don't go to sleep with a full belly while your neighbor goes to sleep hungry. Peace, love and blessings to you all. And if the Almighty wills, I'll see you on the next one. Tara a bit.